Hello, welcome to the Monday, December 28th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We've got a couple of smaller diaries over the long weekend, uh, starting with actually a guest diary by a student that took a class with Xavier and Jim explaining how to quickly extract indicators of compromise from the Tridex dropper. Tridex, a very popular family of malware, so certainly nice to have some relatively automated quick tools uh, to get a handle on how you possibly detect who in your environment got infected by a particular variant that you may run into. In addition, Xavier analyzed a malicious Word document that delivered an octopus backdoor. And then we have a couple of small diaries by Didier, again, talking about extracting strings from malicious documents and also uh, dealing with different encodings in Base64 dump. And one item uh, that uh, caused national news uh, this uh, weekend was on the 25th uh, when a bomb went off in downtown Nashville. Now, uh, the RV that contained the bomb was parked in front of an AT&T building. And while luckily nobody was hurt too badly in this event, it did cause a major disruption to AT&T's network in the southeast. This is one of those cases where very specific points in a carrier's infrastructure can have substantial regional effects. And in this case, much of the southeast was at least for some time without a wireless and in some case internet service. By now, most of the service has been restored according to AT&T, but uh, they're still working and are still not uh, back to normal as I am recording this. And then uh, last week, there was some confusion about a report by Microsoft where Microsoft stated that they found a second piece of malware on SolarWinds installs that were infected by the famous backdoor that was delivered with SolarWinds that's often also called a sunburst. This uh, new malware was named Supernova and it wasn't really clear where it came from, but SolarWinds has now released an update to its advisory and states that this web shell apparently was installed via a vulnerability in the Orion platform API. This vulnerability has been patched and uh, again, make sure you are running an up-to-date version of SolarWinds. The Supernova patch, as SolarWinds calls it, was released on December 23rd. And well, it's just about a year that we had this uh, big vulnerability in Citrix ADC. So just fitting uh, that we have a, well, a smaller issue with uh, Citrix ADC to talk about. And that's a distributed denial of service attack abusing the DTLS or Datagram Transport Layer Security Protocol. DTLS is essentially TLS over UDP. As many UDP protocols, a small request can lead to a larger response. And apparently Citrix ADC servers are being abused as amplifiers here because their response is actually amazingly large. It's 35 five times larger than the request, while for other implementation, it's usually only a factor of four or five. So the denial of service here is actually not really targeting these devices. They're denial of servicing themselves by actually being used as amplifiers. And also a little bit unusual here, it will exhaust uh, the upstream bandwidth uh, from the device uh, to the internet, not the downstream from the internet uh, to uh, the device. Quick fix here is to turn off uh, DTLS. That's at least the quick fix that's recommended by Citrix at this point. And apparently some group did attempt uh, to attack CrowdStrike and in particular targeting their Azure or Office 365 uh, infrastructure. Luckily, well, uh, they were not successful and CrowdStrike is 
probably striking back the best way possible by releasing a free tool that allows you to summarize information about your Azure environment and to make it easier to identify these attacks and weak configurations has been released as open source PowerShell script to GitHub and a link will be added to the show notes. Well, that's it for today. This week, we'll do again sort of a three podcast a week with a no podcast for Thursday and Friday. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.